But sooner or later, I knew that there were bigger machines. I knew there were machines with more horsepower, faster machines. And, and I started getting that itch where I wanted to venture out and go into other companies to learn these different machines. Learning the trade and learning how to mill and going from 30 inches a minute to 60 to 100 to 200 to 300 to 400 inches a minute. And I was realizing that I'm actually saving the company money and I'm consistent in my cuts and this is how you make money in this trade. I went back and I basically stepped back because when I walked in through the door, they instantly put me on a machine. We're running aluminum parts and they were running at 30 inches a minute. And as I looked down over 20 CNC machines, they're all running just like that. And all the machinists are talking to each other. They're not even focused on the machining because the machines are taking so long, like a part that should take five minutes is taking 30 minutes, but nobody even cares. You know, I came to a place where I was like, I'm just going to reprogram these jobs. Like, it was absolutely insane. So I came to a place when I got a little bit of confidence. I had been there for a few weeks where I went into programming. I had the runtime because the job that I was running was taking 30 minutes. So I would change parts. I would inspect them. I'd make sure everything was dialed. I'd go into programming and I would reprogram the job. I would set all my tools, get everything ready, and then when the part finished, I would open it up, change out some tools, add my program. I'd keep the other program, but I'd add my program, and then I would proof it out, and I'd run the parts. And literally, from 30 minutes, I'd drop it down to four minutes. Just speeds and fees, just simple things. And then I started putting more vices in and running more parts, so I would be running 30 minutes like we were before, but now I'm running six or eight pieces. Makes perfect sense. But after doing that, I caught the attention of the boss. And I don't want to say his name because this is a true story, but this guy, this machinist, he used to sit on everybody's tables. So he's the boss, he's the lead, and he would sit and talk to the machinist. So he'd sit on your table, you'd be running parts, they'd be taking forever, of course, and you'd be talking stories with him. And then he would go sit at the next table and the next table, and he was just constantly sitting at tables, talking to the machinists while they were machining their parts, of course, long run time. Well, when he came to my table and he actually sat down, I told him, I said, hey, I was running this part and it was taking 30 minutes, and now I got it at four minutes, 50 seconds, and now I'm running multiple parts, and I'm working on the next job, and I was like, check out this tool pad. So it used to run at 30 inches a minute. Now it's running at 250 inches a minute. Not crazy, but getting after it. And I'm saving all of these times. It's not just how fast it's running. It's how much material, right? The MRR, how much material are you removing per minute? And sometimes it's all the variables. It's the speed, it's the depth of cut, it's the type of tool, it's the size of tool. It's how you're holding it, how many different features you're machining at the same time, how many parts you're running, all of it. But on this day, he looked at the machine, he saw it running abnormally fast, and the first thing he thought was, that is out of control, that's dangerous, I'm not used to it. So what he told me was, Titan, that is dangerous. And I looked at him, I said, that's not dangerous, because I've actually ran 30 parts, none of them have pulled out all of them are beautiful. He grabs the part, grabs the caliper, he checks the dimensions, he looks at the surface finishes, he says it's a beautiful part. But then he says, okay Titan, you can run it, but since you have the old program, when the night shift comes in, put it back to the other program, because these machinists are not used to it and they will think that it's dangerous. I literally stopped, I looked at him, I tried to explain myself, but no matter what I said, he would not believe it. He would not get it. Nothing was going to change. I ended up working there for another five months. I went on to build another company. A lot of you guys know the story. I finally went out on my own and the rest is history. I didn't change who I was. I just realized, you know what? There's different feet for different shoes. There's different fits. Not every machinist is going to fit into a certain mold. I like being efficient. I want to be aggressive. 
people can say I'm dangerous, but I know that there is a place for me. So after building multiple shops and making other people money, I finally went out on my own. Everybody in this trade has different skills. Everybody has different talents. Not everybody's supposed to work for themselves. But the great thing is that in machining, the door is open for you to rise to your full potential, which will allow you to take care of yourself, take care of your family, make money for your company. Boom. I love you guys. I love this trade. Until the next video, I will see you guys later. Boom.